Namaste. Hello everyone. Welcome to Shal Gulhati Shiva and Mysticism for another episode of Monday with Mahadev. Today I am going to speak to you about a term which modern mystics use a lot and that term is visualization. By visualization they mean that we should be able to visualize a particular scene or a particular event or a particular situation which is good and positive and through the power of the mind we should be able to manifest that reality and some of you may have read about the laws of attraction the book of secrets and so on which are constantly reminding us that we in our human brain have the power to manifest a better reality and even people like Einstein said that imagination is a greater force than simple knowledge, book learning and classes. So by visualization, the modern mystics tell us that imagine that you're walking on a beach and feel the soil under your feet, see the ocean waves coming at you, see the palm trees waving in the air, so on and so forth and you feel calm and peaceful and you manifest better things for yourself. But visualization is not actually a new term. Long time back, Swami Vivekananda, about 150 years ago, spoke of conscious dreaming. You see, the modern mystics talk of lucid dreaming, which means that before we go to sleep, we should be able to raise ourselves to a level where we can lucidly dream about the things that we want. But Swami Vivekananda had said this 150 years ago. He said, become conscious dreamers. Now, dreaming doesn't only happen in sleep. It happens in the day also, which we call daydreaming. So daydreaming is usually thought of as something very futile to do, you know, wasting your time. But the Swami's one word, conscious, what did it mean? It meant that we need to be aware of the fact that we are just not a body and mind, but somewhere we are connected to a supreme consciousness. When we put ourselves in that pitch, when we are conscious that we are all related to the supreme energy, and from there, when we do <coughs> our imagination, that is called conscious dreaming. And in Kashmir Shaivism, in the Siva Sutras, which is the sacred revelation of Shiva to his Rishi Vasugupta, Shiva talks about the three states of life known to us, which are waking, dreaming, and deep sleep. And then he tells Vasu that there is a fourth state, which is the transcendent state. And then the whole text goes on, on how to try and achieve that state of transcendence at one minute with Mahadev. But the interesting thing is that Shiva hints to him that although we have three states which we do know, which is Jagrat, waking, Swapna, dreaming, and Sushupti, deep, dreamless sleep, we can sometimes have a state which is a combination of two. So let's say we are Jagrat, awake, Swapna, we are daydreaming, or we are in Swapna, in a dream, and in the Swapna we are Jagrat. So in the dream, I was dreaming that I was in Austria or I was in Switzerland and walking through the mountains. Or it can be Swapna Sushupti. I had a dream and in the dream I was asleep on a bench in the park and so on. And the mystics say that there is a state called Swapna Turiya, which means that while you are dreaming, you can sometimes go to the transcendent state of Godhood. And, you know, you can be dreaming and in the dream you can have a fabulous revelation and normally that wakes you up physically and you tell your partner or your parent or your child that I had a fabulous dream. So mystics say that the Swapna state, the dream state, is a very important state to reach transcendence in fact, sometimes it may be easier than meditating and reaching the state of transcendence 
if we train ourselves. And how do we train ourselves? Well, instead of just talking about walking on a beach or walking through the mountains without actually telling how that helps us to manifest a reality, in the Vigyan Bhairav, which is a text that Mahadev gave to Devi Parvati, it begins with her asking him, how do we reach that transcendent state? How do we reach that pitch? And he gives her 112 yoga dharanas, 112 different methods of meditation to reach the state of consciousness. And then Parvati Devi, who is always wanting to elicit something from Mahadev for our benefit, she says, give me some easier meditations. And then Mahadev tells her that in our day-to-day -day practice, where we are using our senses to derive sensation or pleasure, like eating good food, when we eat good food and we are very happy, it is called Ananda. And Mahadev says, even in the sense of taste, when you get delight, leave the thought of the food alone for a bit and start expanding that delight. When you are seeing somebody whom you love very much after a long time and you are delighted, maybe your parent or your guru or your friend from school, and Mahadev says, take that one second to expand the delight. What does he mean by this? When we are eating good food, we are delighted or when we are hearing good music, we are delighted, that sense of ear. Or when we see a beautiful sight, like Switzerland, like Austria, he says, take a minute to delight in the fact that you are basically delight. This ananda which you are feeling is the nature of divine consciousness. So these become easier meditations than just formal meditation in eating, in seeing, in smelling a great scent, and even in touch, sparsha. If we feel delight by a particular touch, maybe a, a little cat which we have at home, or we have some kind of a cushion which is very, very soft, or something like that, even there, that little delight which is given to you for a little time you can expand that by knowing that your nature, the nature of Mahadev is Ananda itself. And therefore we reach that pitch. And when we reach that pitch where a little bliss has become a greater bliss, then we start imagining things. Like I said, even Einstein said that imagination is a greater power than just bookish knowledge. So when we reach a state where we are very calm and blissed, whether it is through formal meditation, whether it is through solitude, whether it is through bliss of our senses, at that point we must train ourselves to think that if this is the nature of God, happiness, real happiness, ananda, what all can God create? What all is possible in this creation? And from there you think out things which are fantastic. And though they may seem improbable to happen, but an idea is the bija, is the seed which gives birth to humongous trees. So this is the older take of the rishis and the munis and Lord Shiva on visualization. You must visualize, yes, walking on a beach or through the mountains, yes, but with a purpose. And the purpose is when I visualize that and the thinking of that scene makes me happy, from there I have to imagine better things knowing that I am part of the divine consciousness and I have come in this human form, this human birth to expand the play, the Leela of God himself. I hope you like this Shiva wisdom. Join me again next Monday and I will be back with yet another story for you. Om Namah Shivaya.